Welcome back to the channel. Today we make the wrist pin bushings for the 8 horse mogul piston project. Here we have a picture of the boring process in the last video. Um, this uh, boring of the uh, wrist pin bosses uh, turned out to be 1.89 inches in diameter and the uh, piston wrist pin is only 1.5 inches in diameter so it's because there's a bronze bushing that goes in each side of the piston and that is the wear point for the uh, wrist pin motion relative to the piston and that's what we're going to be making in this video here's a picture of one of the bushings after I made it um, it's inserted from the inside of the piston one on each side and the wrist pin runs in the ID of that uh, bushing. Uh, bronze is the material of choice here because it's very hard, uh, resistant to wear and compression. Uh, this is going to get a lot of force on it and uh, it also carries oil very well which is something that uh, um, brass just does not do. Here's the setup in the lathe, the uh, four jaw chuck and uh, the bearing bronze uh, blank that I bought. Um, this stuff is also very expensive. Uh, this six and a half inch long piece that is two and a half inches in diameter was about $120 uh, US before shipping. So um, I'll be using about two thirds of this for this um, two, two bushing set. Running the lathe about uh, 210 RPM. The camera doesn't uh, capture at the right speed. It looks like those chucks are turning uh, opposite directions, but they're actually not. It's turning towards the camera at about 210 RPM. Um, we're going to make a few light passes here. This uh, material is nominally the correct dimension. Uh, it's two and a half inches. Um, it's not real critical. There just needs to be enough uh, shoulder there to make a thrust surface for the rod to run up against. That, that'll become evident when we start putting this thing together in a later video. Uh, one other thing about this piece of bronze is it is hollow. It's like a big thick wall piece of pipe. It has an inch and a quarter hole all the way through it and that's nice because we need to bore it out to about inch and a half and it won't take forever to do that because we only need to go about another quarter inch. But it will also uh, keep me from just making chips out of uh, some material that I bought that was very expensive. One thing about this material is it uh, machines pretty easy, even though it is pretty hard. But uh, it just makes chips that fly everywhere. Uh, it's, it makes these really sharp chips that are about twice as big as coarse ground table pepper. And it just... Uh, flies everywhere. You can see on the front of the lathe there, it's all over the compound and the, the apron there and down the ways. and It's all over the floor too. It just goes everywhere. It's just kind of a obnoxious stuff to machine. Uh, it gets all over you and the, those little chips are very sharp. So um, we'll make a few passes here and then we'll switch over to the boring bar. Making the final pass here, took about uh, 50 thousandths off this diameter, uh, it's okay. Uh, just getting it trued up, uh, I'm really pleased with the finish here, and uh, we'll be moving on to the boring bar now. Here we are getting started with the boring process, uh, the inside uh, diameter of this uh, bushing set. Uh, each bushing is going to be about 2.3 inches uh, in length. That's plenty long. It's actually about 200 thousandths of an inch too long, but it gives me some room to uh, trim off and machine down to make a really good fit inside this piston because I'm not sure how much um, material I'm going to have to take off the inside of the piston to true up the uh, inside of those bosses. So I'm just making these parts big and uh, so we'll be using about 4.6 inches of this uh, six and a half material that I bought. Here we are at the end of the boring process, um, just um, running this boring bar pretty light, uh, about 25 thousandths passes. Uh, so we're out to final dimension here. We're actually turning it uh, 10 thousandths under the uh, inch and a half nominal dimension because I'm going to be using a hand reamer once these uh, bushings are uh, installed and uh, that'll do my final alignment through the uh, 
piston for the uh, wrist pin so that it is definitely uh, true and uh, perpendicular to the uh, bore and the uh, rod. Here's one completed bushing. I parted it off and trued it up a little bit off camera. Uh, that bottom surface, that step there, is going to be the thrust washer kind of surface where the rod runs against um, this bushing because this is actually going to be inserted from the inside of the piston and um, that that'll be just a surface there for uh, locating it in the uh, uh, piston so I'll do another one uh, off camera and then we'll be over on the mill here we are back on the mill um, back on the super spacer here with the uh, indexed part I have not taken it out the lathe I'm doing a uh, center drill uh, marking on this uh, bushing. I, I installed it backwards. It's on the outside of the piston. That's not the way it goes. It goes from the inside out. But I need to drill some uh, holes in this uh, bushing and in the piston for a rod. Um, that uh, pin or rod will be inserted from the inside and it will be half in the uh, bushing and half in the piston and that will keep that uh, bushing from spinning uh, in the uh, piston. So uh, we're going to start drilling holes. Well here we go. I say we're drilling holes but we're really just drilling one hole twice. Um, starting out with a 3 uh, drill bit here. I'm going to drill down about an inch and a half uh, here from this deck height here. It's only about an inch into the piston. Um, and then uh, we'll chase that with a end mill. I didn't want to plunge with an end mill. They don't do so well uh, in that application, even the center uh, cutting ones. Uh, I wanted to get a lot of this material out. And even though this uh, um, drill will probably walk some and it doesn't make a very accurate hole, you know, you only have a drill hold about four thousandths nominal off of your uh, dimension there. It doesn't really matter because I'm going to go to a quarter inch with an end mill and it'll true it all up. Um, that's one note about this is uh, um, I spent a lot of time truing this uh, super spacer and this piston up uh, because I knew that I was going to be doing this procedure where I was going to be drilling from the outside but then assembling from the inside. So it's just paramount that everything is lined up properly and uh, dialed in really well or you don't get away with that. It's really hard to explain and visualize how this pin arrangement works um, but I'm, I'm going to drill down about an uh, inch and a half here like I said an inch into the uh, piston itself and uh, half of this pin hole is in the piston and half of it's in this uh, bushing and that will lock that in place and I'm only going down part way here and then chase it with the end mill so that I get a stop in this bushing when inserted from the inside so that the pin cannot come out and hit the cylinder wall it's captive that way uh, I will be chasing the rest of the hole that's halfway in the piston all the way through the boss uh, that way I can uh, get away with putting this uh, bushing on the inside and then having that stop in the bushing that uh, is halfway through the, the bore diameter of that pin and uh, lock it in place. And as for a pin, I'll be using a spring pin or uh, what I call them as roll pins uh, and that will take up any uh, variance in the hole or anything. But um, uh, it, it'll be evident when we go to put this all together in another video of how this works and it may be easier to see here when we look at the final uh, bushing here in just a second. Here we are plunging with the end mill. Uh, this is a four flute center cutting uh, carbide end mill that uh, will reach down in there the uh, inch and a half that I need to go uh, to get my uh, uh, first part of this hole done. Uh, for this pin. Um, one thing about this is uh, I am using the power feed on the quill on this mill uh, because I want a very slow constant feed. Uh, if you try to do that by hand you'd most likely catch that uh, end mill. It, it kick and catch and then you'd end up breaking that carbide end mill. So uh, slow feeds 
uh, power feeds are best when you can do it. Um, high speed steel uh, end mill would not do this very well. It'd just end up dulling it because a high speed uh, tool wants you to take some uh, material off and not just basically make dust here, which is what I'm doing with this slow feed with this carbide end mill, but it is cutting really well. So I'll do that and then I'll pull this uh, uh, bushing out and, and complete the hole all the way through the, the wrist pin boss. And uh, then we'll take a look at the uh, um, bushing itself here after it's done. Here's a picture of the bushing. Um, you can see that hole uh, halfway in the uh, bushing here it goes down a distance and then it stops. That'll be the uh, stop for the wrist pin. Um, then I went ahead off camera and uh, used the end mill and went on down through the rest of the boss on the inside of the piston. So this can be inserted on the inside and then that stop there uh, on this part will keep the roll pin from uh, coming out and scratching the cylinder. Here's an in view of the uh, bushing. You can see that hole is a complete hole here because that uh, flange end is larger in diameter. So um, that's where the wrist pin will actually go in when it's uh, inside the piston there. And um, this, this will become evident when we get it uh, put together. Well, one thing about this project is uh, you got to be looking ahead to the next uh, procedure and what you can do now to prep for it. Um, this oil groove here on the top of this half piston uh, piece that I have uh, goes down each side of the piston and uh, oils the uh, wrist pin. It's how the wrist pin gets uh, in any lubrication. It comes in on a drip oiler there and then uh, goes down to the wrist pin sides on either side of the piston. So uh, being as I have this in the, the mill right now and it's all straight and true and center line is dialed in, I'm going to put a... Uh, uh, center drill mark where that groove goes uh, for future machining. So I indexed the super spacer 90 degrees. I'm uh, exactly perpendicular to the wrist pin uh, bosses there and I'm absolutely in the center of the wrist pin which is where I want to be so I'm just going to put a uh, little divot there with the center drill and that will be my locating point for uh, future machining of that uh, oil groove. And that's all the time I got for this video. Uh, here's a little look forward to what it's going to be doing in the next video. I've got to reach in here and dress the sides of these uh, wrist pin bosses so that those bushings have a relatively smooth square surface to uh, mate up against. Uh, I've done a little bit of work on that. Uh, uh, prior to doing this video and uh, that's proving to be quite a challenge to reach in there with a long enough tool and not have it uh, uh, chatter and want to break loose so I'm waiting on some tooling to come in and then uh, that'll be in the next video um, thanks for watching uh, like and subscribe uh, sure does help the channel out and I really like to see the comments uh, from people it's really interesting on what people say and uh, uh, I, I really enjoy that. So uh, we'll see you in the next video.